Erwin. Antonio. Ay, play Olympia y buena suerte. Gracias. Todo, todo. Muchas gracias. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the classic story of the Matador versus the Bull. The Matador. Young Tony DeMarco has to use his technique, jab, stay outside, pick his shots, tie him up, and frustrate the champion. The Bull. Edwin Valero wants to make it fast and furious from the start. Throw the youngster out of his comfort zone, get inside, and unleash a blitzkrieg that the 24-year-old ne has never seen. And we begin. Two southpaws. Valero would love nothing better than at any point in this first round to push DeMarco against the ropes. You can see that's his goal as he continues to move forward. The jab is an important weapon for both men. And Valero uses it mostly as a range finder. There's a beauty from DeMarco. DeMarco normally a slow starter. Valero said he watched only two rounds of tape of DeMarco. DeMarco and his trainer, Romulo Quirarte, uh, just the opposite. They watched what they could get their hands on of Valero, even though that's not much. Valero told us that he wasn't going to think about just swarming uh, DeMarco early, that he'd rather just take his time and do what he needed to do, and the big punches would come. Uh, I saw Valero in the elevator in the hotel. He doesn't speak very much English, nor I do Spanish, but he looked at me, he threw a right hand, and he said, I'm a machine, I end it quickly, <laughs> with saw, the right hand. He saw me in the... Uh, Live in the uh, elevator did the same thing and used an expletive to add to that. And already some blood on the face of Valero. Underneath the eye on the cheekbone. What? I guess that came from a punch. I don't know. May have come from that stiff jab delivered by DeMarco at the very beginning. And that's what Valero wants to do when he gets DeMarco on the rope. Stroke a lot of punches. of a puncher. He thinks if he hits you, you are going to get hurt and ultimately you're going to go. And that's the mentality as that's the way he proceeds in fights. DeMarco is a very accurate puncher, folks. He's a converted right-hand puncher. Decided to turn southpaw when he watched his uncle, a former prize fighter, who was a southpaw fighter. So he has a lot of strength in the right jab and the right hook, and he'll go under and over with it. There's the first good left hand from Valero. Let's see what it did to DeMarco. He landed a really good one. And a cut on the right cheek of Valero. Also a rags to riches story. Father left when he was seven years old. He worked selling fruit at the fruit stand. As he searched for work, he found a job working at, of all places, a gym. And he ended up becoming a national champion in his homeland of Venezuela. Time. And that's the end of the first round. But Valero was able to land a telling straight left Ready hand. Go. That second one was the good punch. DeMarco is at Antonio, the kid DeMarco in black. The DeMarco people believe that if they can take this fight into the fifth or sixth or seventh round, they'll do well. Although, we should say that Valero has won his recent fights in that same time frame with stoppages. That's where DeMarco doesn't want to be against the ropes, and he motors off it. DeMarco's people telling us that they want to keep this fight in the center of the ring. There's a left hand by Valero grazing the head, but look how peaceful, how tranquil. Antonio DeMarco is very relaxed to start this fight. He is. The one mistake he's making, and Valero's taking advantage of it, is he's bending down a bit, and Valero's starting to land some of those straight left hands. As when DeMarco bends in, that's a big mistake, and Valero's got the power with that straight left. He's just like a, like a freight train with that left hand. He's always got an eye toward throwing it. I'll say it again. DeMarco is a slow starter. He'll pick his shots. But he really turns his punches over, and sometimes they come out of nowhere. You know, Valero is throwing more, uh, some good combinations. That was a great jab by DeMarco. Valero is a good combination puncher when he employs that, and he's doing it in spots here tonight. Valero with both hands down, 
Valero saying that he caught an elbow. Now he's got a gash oh, wow. over his right head. Yeah, that didn't oh, come from a punch. Whoa. I guarantee you that. Don't look at another doctor. I'm going Wow. Yeah. That is a major oh, gash. My. Yeah, there's no way a punch elbow. caused that. Francisco Arenas is the ringside doctor, and that is ugly. He may not be able to continue. No, whoa, look at that gut. Yeah. Intentional, but boy, that's a big gash. Wow, blood pouring down the side of his face and all the way down to his trunks. We will see now what the champion Edward Valero is made of. And he comes out and it's time to brawl. But remember, if this fight were stopped before round four because of that cut, it would be a technical draw. So if Valero thinks he's got to try and end this fight quickly, that's not the case. After round four, they would go to the scorecards. Remind you of when Marvin Hagler saw his blood against Tommy Hearns, he turned out to be another human being. He did indeed, and the difference is that came from a punch. DeMarco trying to remain patient, but there is an awfully big target on the face, and a mouthpiece now gone. Valero loses his mouthpiece. DeMarco, he wants to fight his urge of being a brawler. Here comes Interesting. That was an intriguing round. It's not over yet. Six seconds ago, the second. And that's the end of the round. The forehead. The right hand was there, and there comes the elbow. There's no question that's what created the cut on the forehead of Edwin Valero. Wow, that's a rough one. But the interesting thing is that later on in the round, Valero would lose his mouthpiece and have to fight a long time. That left hand got there. More dangerous over the right eye. That's the kind of cut that could have a fight stop. So he's got some issues to deal with. DeMarco, very patient. He told us that that's what he wanted to do, use his boxing skills, move around, establish that jab. Also in the first round, some blood coming out of the nose of Valero, which is a sign that the jab was landing for DeMarco. You know, if not for all these cuts, the interesting thing is, I think Valero might have won those first two rounds. So for him, it's going kind of the way he wants, and yet, you can make the case for DeMarco. He just wants to get out of these first three rounds, and he has landed some meaningful punches. There's no question about that. Oh, big left hand by Valero. DeMarco's taking those left hands very, very well. Valero winding up on his punches. You can feel Antonio DeMarco, though, as this fight wears on, wanting to engage just a little more. And he is landing some very good punches, but taking lefts from Valero as well. DeMarco also with a very good chin. We've seen him. In some fights recently, especially his last three, when he fought Kid Diamond, Ramkulov, he showed some tremendous boxing skills against a slick veteran and very skilled fighter. Got him out of there as well. The interesting thing is that Valero has landed some very good lefts, and so far they have not stunned or hurt DeMarco. There's another one. And one of the big issues about Valero coming into this fight because he hadn't really fought, there's another good left hand, he hadn't fought great opposition. Were, was he a great knockout puncher or were those fighters just susceptible? His last three fighters, by the way, are ages 34, 36, and 39, Valero's opponents. Well, so we'll see if, he, if his power is sustained. So far, DeMarco has taken those left hands, but DeMarco may have lost three rounds. And because he, he's knocked so many opponents out early, Valero has not gone into deep waters very many times. He's never gone 12 rounds. He's gone 10 rounds once, eight rounds once, seven rounds once. 
And DeMarco getting an opportunity in the first three to feel the power of Valero. And just looking at him in the ring right now, you get the feeling that he's saying, not as much as I thought. Blood still coming out of the gash on the right eye of the champion. Edwin Valero in red. Valero has knocked so many people out early. 18 straight at the beginning of his career in the first round, 19 overall in the first round. And now we go to round four. Expect to see DeMarco start to pick up the pace. And you know, one of the things Edwin Valero's done better than I think some might expect, when you watch him on tape, sometimes you, you don't see all the skills. He's not a bad defensive fighter, and I'm gonna tell you something else. He punches in combination better than you even think. But I will say this, he keeps his hands awfully low, yeah, Al. He does. Look at his hands, and he keeps his hands low in punching range. Nice stiff jab by DeMarco. DeMarco landed a very nice punch there, but the volume of punches coming from Valero, and it is true, DeMarco normally picks the pace up in rounds four and five, and we'll see if he does. Matador versus the Bull, and so far the Bull has been able to throw combination punches in Valero, as Al mentioned. Looks like he does have the lead thus far. And that's our unofficial view. The judges may see it differently, but he's certainly been more active. He's landed more, more shots, probably more power shots. Singular punches from DeMarco look good. There are big shots by Valero. DeMarco almost buckled. Saved by the ropes. Now some redness on the forehead of DeMarco. You don't know if it's Valero's blood or not. And this is usually when Antonio DeMarco gets into a firefight. And look, he's coming forward. When he's hurt is when he goes after his opponent. This is a big round for Edwin Valero. And give Valero credit. He's fighting with a monstrous gash on his forehead and a slight cut on his right eye. DeMarco eating that jab. Another combination landing for Valero. But the question is, what kind of gas does the champion have in his yep. tank when you consider that he has not gone to the deep waters very many times? And DeMarco gets better as the fight goes on. That is the question right now. And that is the strategy. Yep. But I don't think DeMarco wanted to take this many power punches at this point in the fight, especially not like he did here in round four. Do you think he's been hurt, though, Al? I don't know if he's been hurt, Gus. It's hard to tell. But I think he felt the power of Valero. I don't think Valero has hurt him a bit. I think he's walked through it, in my opinion, Al. And he's setting him up to make a serious run as this fight goes on. There's a left hand. Early on in the round, would get that strong jab in, though he did take a left hand over it in the process. And Valero getting a couple of shots in. Valero, though, had very good moments in this round. And you see how well he uses a jab to set up these power punches. Now, but DeMarco was able to take those shots. That means he's tired already, and we're in the fifth round. And they're banking on that. They feel these middle rounds, and as we get into the later rounds, will be good for them. Now, we have to see if that's the case. Canate, of course, a great trainer, worked with Julio Cesar Chavez, worked with Raul Ibarro Perez, who happens to be the father-in-law, interestingly, of Antonio DeMarco, former Bantamweight champion. And let's take a look at the official judges' scoring. As we anticipated, an e a big edge for Valero. Two judges with a 39-36, and Orange Schellenberger has it 40-35, so they have a pretty big margin. And remember, a point was deducted. Now here, the breast row, which has made the scoring a lot closer all night. A two for Valero, and Mark Walsh from AP has it a draw, interestingly. I have every round for Valero. Valero's mouth open again. So, I have it 40-35. Now DeMarco starting to stand in the center of the ring in exchange. And these are the rounds where what you talked about, Gus, we will see if it is so. If Antonio DeMarco, as 
they clearly told us before the fight would be able to control these rounds. But as Kanate told him, he's going to have to be more active with his punching or else he won't make Valero more tired and he won't win the fight. The crowd being informed of the scoring as we speak. Both fighters. Spanish fighters understanding, probably hearing the scoring as it goes on, as they go toe to toe in the middle of the ring. Mike, Mike. By Valero as he turned it over. Another, yeah, I'm sorry, Jess. That left hand by Valero was a strong one. That was one of the better ones he's thrown in this fight. Now, to DeMarco's credit, and this speaks to what you talked about, he has not buckled from those punches. Round five, scheduled for 12, the WBC lightweight title. Edwin Valero, the champion, who moved up from 130 to 135 pounds, was a super featherweight champion as well. And he is in the red, Antonio DeMarco in the black trunks. Now DeMarco coming in. He's rolling that left hand. He has to be careful. Time! And there, and push your fighter back. And there's the left hand again. He is like a mini version. Uh, right now he's a mini version. He's a bigger version when Pacquiao fought this way of Manny Pacquiao. And there's the straight left again by Valero. And Valero does some things that you don't notice. He jabs to the body. He faints. He's a more complete fighter than I thought when I watched the tape. Here comes DeMarco. Break, break. DeMarco's going to have to get a little more aggressive at some point in this fight. Take the chance. Valero has been down once in his career. He was put down as a junior lightweight, but he's certainly never been stopped. And again, another left hand. Ooh, the head very nice right hook by DeMarco. And that got Valero's attention. Now DeMarco gaining a little confidence. And making and Valero ties him up. Yeah. And that is a sign. Valero felt that punch. He felt the right hook and the straight left hand. Of DeMarco, those are the first good body shots landed in a long time by either fighter. DeMarco has to get to the point where he really starts to let his hands go. And that's the question sometimes when a trainer, Romulo Chiarte, wants to make sure that his fighter fights technically. But at the same time, you sometimes take away some of his raw and natural instincts. For DeMarco, he doesn't want to wait too late. Well, he's dug a monstrous hole for himself. This round has been won by Valero as well, despite the two good punches that DeMarco landed. Valero has dominated the round. Time, 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 time. Edwin Valero landing yet another straight left hand, although DeMarco countered it very well with a, with a right hook. And that's what... Uh, DeMarco really wants to do. And that right hook, which we talked about in the keys to victory, will get in for DeMarco. That's his best punch, and he lands. Round seven, scheduled for 12 for the WBC lightweight title. Edward Valero, the champion, running away with it right now in red. Antonio DeMarco, to chat. the challenger, has to start letting his hands go. He's going backwards. He needs to start moving forward. Valero finding him again with that short looping left hand. He told me during our meeting that his right hand is stronger. And you know, Valero is doing all the little things in this fight. Doubling with the jab, fainting to the body, throwing combinations, all the things that not everybody thought he would do throughout a fight against a good fighter. That's exactly what he's doing. So that's why he's winning every single one of these rounds, or most of them. Right now, DeMarco looking like a, just an ABC fighter. No special effects, no, no urgency. That's a very good way to put it, yeah. Kind of generic, if yes. you will. Yeah, and you know, we've seen him perform very well. But again, oh, nice hook by uh, DeMarco. That's what he's got to land. But again, we have not seen him against this caliber of fighter. Valero continuing to come in, setting him up. He wants a knockout. He wants to show the American public that he's a future superstar in this weight class. Hey, Impressive thing about that after he landed all those punches, he stepped back to make DeMarco miss.
is. And that's what we don't know that he can do against a good fighter, and he's doing it. Early in his career, Valero was known as a fighter that had incredible boxing skills, not just a brawler. They said he was like water with his hand speed and also with his footwork. He told us in our meeting yesterday that he can do that if need be, and we've seen him do yeah, it I this evening. Absolutely, Gus. I didn't see it on the tapes. You see it tonight. There's all the subtleties. He's still not the greatest defensive fighter on the planet and can't be hit, but it's hard to hit a guy when he throws an eight-punch combination like that, and they're pretty accurate. And nothing in return from Antonio DeMarco. You wonder if he's confused because Valero throws a lot of punches from weird angles. DeMarco missing. Oh, look at the quickness and the slickness of Edwin Valero. He's showing that he's a boxer. Round seven coming to an end. Time! The jab straight left hand. But as Gus pointed out, he also has thrown some wider punches like those left hands he threw and the right hooks. Setting things up with the jab, but here, that overhand left. And that's what I love. Of champion Edwin Valero in the red trunks. He's fought in Japan, he's fought in Venezuela, he's fought in Mexico. He's fought a few times in the United States, but never in front of big audience, audiences. And he knows that this is his opportunity to show America especially what he can do, and he's been doing it. He really has. You know, we talk about DeMarco potentially having the advantage later in the fight, and DeMarco coming on in this round. But we have to point out the Valero when he won the Super Featherweight title in 2006 from Vincent Mascara, dominated round six, seven, and eight, and nine, and knocked him out in the tenth. Now this, oh my, what a left hand. So Valero does know what it's like to control the latter part of a fight and win it. But in this round, DeMarco's come out with conviction, but for his trouble, took a big left hand. And that's the danger for DeMarco. When you come forward, you can, might walk into one of those straight lefts like he did. Valero, very effective tonight with that step back after he delivers his combination. And he's also, because of his slick fighting, taken the crowd out of this fight. Oh, mean left hand. There's another one. Now Valero starting to pick apart the 24-year-old DeMarco. DeMarco landing a right hook. DeMarco needs to turn this around with a monstrous right hook, and that'll be what does it if he can. And that's what he needs right now very badly. And like Manny Pacquiao, though, Al Valero throwing so many punches in combination from different angles, from different hand placement. You know, I said he was the old Manny Pacquiao. Right. He's a little more straightforward exactly. than conventional. Exactly. But he's actually a combination of the old and new Manny That's Pacquiao right. because he's throwing, although certainly he's not as good a fighter as Pacquiao right now. No one is. Maybe Floyd Mayweather. But the fact of the matter is, he is showing all those nuances. Maybe Floyd Mayweather. Well, or, or potentially. No well, that's the big well, debate, isn't it? Manny Pacquiao is as good as Floyd Mayweather. That's my <laughs> Okay, there you go. Floyd has never lost. I have great respect for Floyd. He's a terrific fighter. He's not as active as Pacquiao. <laughs> Eight rounds scheduled for 12. 17 seconds to go. Oh, low blow by DeMarco. He's getting wild now. He is taking a beating in there. Although it looks like Valero is the fighter that has actually taken the beating, but he is doing swaps from AP with it a little closer for Valero. Valero now moving in. He told us that he wouldn't go looking for the knockout, but he wants it. And this is a point in the fight, though, where even though DeMarco had the look of a really beaten fighter in that corner, for Valero, there's still danger to get hit with a right hook, but he is landing big shots. DeMarco eating shot after shot. That left hand is vicious. Now he goes to the body, comes over to the top, barely misses with the left hand. 
if this round goes really badly for Antonio Duraco, Romulo Quedarte, who is as close as you can be to a fighter and maybe like a second father to Duraco, uh, might think about ending this thing. I agree with you 100%. Quedarte kept asking Tony what he wanted to do, how he felt, no answer. Most of the time during that one minute break. And there was talk in DeMarco's corner that if he didn't get busier, they were going to stop the fight. Nice straight left hand by DeMarco, but it's one and done when he throws punches. Valero, so slick. And I think we need to put the rest this, this, to rest the idea that Valero can't fight in the later rounds. As he did against Mascaro when he dominated six, seven, eight, and nine. That's what he's done in this fight. Ooh, another good combination by Valero. Ooh, one, two, stiff as he steps off. Dips in, dips out, great head movement. Chopping up the younger DeMarco. No answers for DeMarco right now. Knows that he's trailing the fight and he won't move forward. DeMarco and his people, oh, monstrous left by Valero. They asked for Valero. They wanted to fight him. They thought the style of DeMarco would lend itself to beating Valero. Like a lot of other people, I think they underestimated some of the skills of Valero. Seven seconds ago in the ninth round, scheduled for 12. Now Tony DeMarco, mouth open, tired. Uh, looked like this fight could turn because this unintentional elbow, we assume unintentional, that was the way it was called, hit uh, Valero on the forehead and caused that terrible gash. At that juncture, and he was making sure Lawrence Cole knew it was an elbow, though any look at that cut would tell you on the forehead it had to be caused by something other than a cut. Valero, though, kept his concentration and came back and landed big punches to show DeMarco that that had not taken him out of his game plan and that Valero was going to continue the assault. Great as he stops young Tony DeMarco and retains his WBC lightweight title. A very disappointing for the loss for this 24-year-old. Not the end of his boxing career by any stretch of the imagination, but for this man, he made a marketing statement tonight to tell the world, you haven't seen me? Here I am. I am someone to be reckoned with in the lightweight division. And boy, is he up. 27-0. 27 consecutive stoppages as Tony DeMarco retires on his stool, unable to come out for round 10. And Al, you said it. If he wouldn't have performed well in that ninth round, you knew that they were going to stop this fight. As you take a look once again at the beautiful family of the champion, Edwin Valera. And Carolina, uh, cautiously happy, it seems, there. she watches what goes on. But exactly, they, they did stop the fight, and I think appropriately so. Too much experience, too much talent and skill tonight as Edwin Valero basically give Tony DeMarco a good old-fashioned whooping in the ring. Really showing why he is the world champion and considered one of the best pound-for-pound pound fighters in the world. And as you look at him, remember, as you look at that gash, here's a guy that got hit with an elbow early in the fight, had a terrible gash, a little cut on his right eye, and went through all that adversity to reclaim his concentration and continue to control the fight. So that also speaks volumes about what Valero did here tonight. This 28-year-old showed us not only better skills, but amazing grit and determination. <laughs> He's got a great personality as well as he takes a look at that cut.